I don't want to. Lee Suchek, I come to you as an envoy from the North Pole. We have been fighting a war against Krampus and Black Peters. The North Pole has always been a place of hope. If either one of them gains control, then that hope is lost. Well, if you're done being melodramatic, I found something. I figured out that this came from a Russian APC. Alright everybody, look sharp. ETA 3 minutes. The last of a dying breed. Does Vidania. He really doesn't know when to shut up, does he? News, the Russian president has recalled his ambassadors to Canada and the United States following the incident at the North Pole. For those of you unaware, the Russians were conducting a clandestine military operation to invade and to occupy Alaska as part of their imperial reclamation agenda. Are you sure? The Americans and Canadians thwarted the attack, but there were four men who influenced the president and pushed for operation. They were the ones who helped finance machinery in the attack, and I suspect that they are the ones we truly need to target. On the folder, it reads, Diadoki. We see a plane stream through the clouds. Inside, we see the bushwhackers, Lee, Luca, and JJ. They are doing numerous things. Lee is reading the dossier file, JJ is on his phone, and Luca is going through the food stock. Aw, oh, man, can you believe this? What? Look! All they have are Fritos, these fruit cups, and the only booze they have is this no-name vodka brand. Yeah, that sucks. Can you stop looking at the pantry for a second and get over here? What is this exactly? Our next mission. I know that, but what? what is it? I don't think he's entirely clear on what we're doing. Oh, well, I'm assuming we have to kill someone and these are the four ding-dongs we need to off. Who the hell are they? Wasn't it obvious? They turned to see a man standing before them. Uh, okay. You are? Adam Shemnitz, CIA liaison. It's a pleasure to meet you, the three of you. We've been monitoring your activities and have found you to be quite formidable. Well, that's one way of putting it. Gentlemen, these four men were responsible for financing, planning, and executing the Russian invasion of the North Pole and the attempted annexation of Alaska, a task which you successfully thwarted. Well, uh, technically we had help from the Canadians. And Santa. Right, it, and Santa. Nevertheless, our intel has gathered that they may try again, and we have been greenlit to carry out a search and destroy mission of these four men. We believe that without his allies, the Russian president will be more hesitant to act, as he will lose his cover. Cover? Basically, if he makes another move, he can't just blame the Stooges. It's all on him. Precisely. These four, Vladimir Herensky, Lucas Bisboulis, Mikhail Sherandulo, and Ptolemy Naren, are the major allegriths with the means and motives to push for this endeavor. How exactly did you get this intel? We had help from Kyiv, the Ukrainian intelligence bureau that has been monitoring this for five years now. The D... 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 What is this? Diadoki. What's that? Well, it's a reference to the generals who fought over Alexander the Great's empire after he died and went to war with each other to see who'd come out on top. Eventually, they came to an agreement to carve it up into different kingdoms. Ah. Uh. We didn't pick the name. This was all the Ukrainians' idea. 
Well, that's clever. I'll give him that. So, where are we heading now? Austria. Vienna, to be specific. You'll meet with the handler, co-named Perdicus. Oh, God. I'm sure Luca will explain what that means, too. Well, Perdicus was the designated region until the Diadochi went to war. And there it is. Why Austria? We have intel that within the next 48 hours, Vladimir Heransky will be attending a live performance of Mitridate Reed de Ponto. <laughs> and you three are going to kill him. Oh. Oh, quaint. Wait, 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 wait. If this is so important, why isn't the CIA handling this? Why get us three to do your dirty work? We cannot be seen to be involved. Otherwise, it'd be a tricky international incident. Also, the Ukrainians insisted on hiring you after your stellar performance a few weeks ago. And also because we're CIA patsies, right? Things go south, you can disavow it? Come on. It's like a classical move you'd make. Like lambs to the slaughter. We're about to land in the next 50 minutes. So I suggest you read upon these men and your mission. Maybe learn something and exploit it. A weakness of sort, some sort. The three look at the dossier and then at each other. Once you arrive in Vienna, a car will take you to a safe house. And that's where you'll meet your contact. You'll pick up your equipment there. When the plane lands, the trio get into a waiting car and they promptly arrive at an apartment in the city center of Vienna. As I walk up the stairs, I look at the paper and see they're at the right apartment door. Before that knock, the door opens and a red-haired woman stares at them. You're late. Uh, debatable. She looks around and waves them in. As they shuffle in, she closes the door and pulls out a gun. Arms up. Uh, alright, but we don't have any money. She pats each one of them down and takes their phones and puts them in the locker. She then turns around. Perticus, I presume? You know the target? We know who it is, but that's all. Well, apparently we're supposed to kill this guy. Not sure if we'll be able to get close enough to do it, though. Perticus sighs and walks over and pulls out a briefcase and opens it to reveal parts of a sniper rifle. Rensky is set to attend the live performance of Mozart's Mitridati at 2000 hours tonight. Before that, you will break into his penthouse to obtain the data pertaining to any f future invasion plans. Info we can use later on. Then in 1900 hours, you'll secure a sniping position in the building across the street, and as he is leaving, you will take the shot. Us three? One of you will cause an incident to clear the streets, and another will stall the driver so he doesn't have time to escape. I calculate you will have a 30-second window to take the shot before he escapes. Ooh, ooh, dibs on Sniper. Hell no. You'll be the one causing the ruckus. And what makes you think you can tell me what to do? <laughs> Jerk. JJ, can you take the shot? Uh, sure. So once we killed this guy, what's next? You'll meet at these coordinates and head to your next assignment. And I am assuming you won't be offering any help in all this? I just did. Now get to it. It comes to the building across the street where we, see, where we see JJ setting up the sniper rifle. Down at the street level, we see Luca and Lee sitting at a cafe watching at the opera house as Luca sips his coffee and smokes his cigar. Sure you don't want one? You know I don't drink coffee. And will you put that out? It smells so bad. I'm gonna paint the sidewalk green and yellow. Luca pulls a face. Well, you know it's legal here. It's legal everywhere so long as you do it outside, Jumbie. All right. So, we need to head here, turn left here, 
and then go right, and we're at the dude's penthouse. Well, how do we get in? Well, that Perdicus lady gave us a sequencer tool to go through the different combinations and open the door. And if all else fails, we blow it up. He produces some C4 from his backpack. What? It was, it was light there. I was not going to take it. Dude, put that away before someone sees you. Come on. As darkness falls, he cuts to the penthouse. Luca programs the sequencer, and we hear beeps as Lee looks at the door. It stops, and the door opens, and they walk in. Lee aims his gun and looks around, but sees no one is there. Luca walks over to the computer and turns it on and types in the password and sticks a USB drive in. Lee walks over and looks at Luca. Let me guess. The password was... Password? No, it was DQ at 232GG. And how did you know that? Well, it's my password. <sighs> JJ. JJ, you copy? Back at the room, JJ is sitting next to the rifle, peering out at the opera with a monocular. Yeah? You see the guy yet? Nope. I'm keeping an eye out, though. It's only... 7.15? I have 6.15. Did you adjust for local time? Um, no. But in any case, the guy isn't here yet. And it's awfully quiet out there, too. It's just people setting everything up. Alright. Remember, don't shoot just yet. Give me and Luke enough time to get there to disperse the crowd, and then when he's isolated, you put him down. Okay... Uh, how long are you guys going to be? Luca holds up the flash drive. We're on our way there now. Roger that. Man, this is ridiculous. I called dibs on being the sniper. I should be up there, cradling that gun and adjusting the scope just to get the shot right. You're not equipped to be a sniper. You shake like you have the jimmies. Do not. Plus, your aim sucks. What? Get off it, man. When we went to the Ren Fair last fall, and we did the archery booth, you kept shooting into the haystacks. The man at the booth was yelling at you to stop shooting at him. I didn't even know you were aiming. You were nowhere near the target. So? Chris had like four beers, and he had better aim than you. Now, come on! Meanwhile, JJ is leaning against the rifle. He peers through the telescopic sight to see the, ca the car pull up. He then looks up to see, see someone on the opera house roof. To his horror, he sees the man is aiming right at him. W what the? The man opens fire and bolts right over him. JJ rolls over and grabs the sniper rifle and hurries for cover. He looks over behind the desk and grabs the walkie-talkie. Uh, guys? Guys? In the car, Luca is driving when Lee picks up the walkie-talkie. We're on our way, dude. Has the target arrived? N no, guys. We've been made. What? There's a sniper on the Opera House roof. He's got me pinned down. Lee looks at Luca. You don't think... Shit. I, I don't know. He picks up the walkie-talkie. JJ, can you get out of there? He sees the red dot move around the wall. Um, no. I could, but I wouldn't get too far. All right, just hang in there, okay? We're on our way. Shit. I think he got the drop on us. I'm actually not surprised. That's not the point. He looks at Luca. So, still want to be the sniper? As he says this, the car crashes into them and they spin around. The car hits a bollard and Lee comes out to see a man wearing a red helmet step out. He pulls out two handguns and begins firing at them. 
actually kicks the door open and screws up to see if Luca is nowhere. Luca? How how the hell did he get out? Bushwhackers. Come out, come out. I've got a proposition for you. Lee leans against the car and checks his ammo. Mr. Rensky is a reasonable man. All he wants to do is make money. Great jobs for people and build a better future. What is so wrong about that? You sound American to me. What are you doing working for the Reds? <laughs> the only color I see is green. Lee jumps up and fires and then ducks again. Red Jack stops and pulls out a green. Come on, we're wasting time. Cyclops has your friend pinned down and I'm gonna finish you off. He tosses the grenade over and Lee screams and runs. Red Jack begins firing, but then turns to see a van hit him, sending him into a wall where he lays there. Lee looks up. Luca! Get in! As they drive off, they come to view of the opera house where Luca drives onto the sidewalk, scattering the attendees. Lee jumps out as Luca drives off. The Cyclops, seeing this, begins firing at him from the van. He just scurries out from his hiding place and sets up the, sets up the sniper rifle. Alright. 30 seconds. He carefully aims his sniper at the target, who is looking confused as his bodyguards gather around him. Come on, Lee. We gotta isolate him. Just give me 30 seconds. That's all I need. Lee holds up his gun and fires into the air, sending people fleeing. A free Poland! Free from the European regulations! Free to do its own thing! And reparations! For all the shit Germans have done over the centuries! And from you, you dumb Russian fuck! This is for Warsaw! He then points his gun at Rensky, prompting the, his bodyguards to rush him. As the tackle him to the ground, a little shot rings out and he falls over. Lee turns to see the bodyguards run over and gather around the body as sirens get closer. Lee gets into an abandoned car and floors it. On the roof, the Cyclops runs to the ledge and sees what has happened. Oh, fuck. Fuck shit! He begins firing into the building opposite the Opera House, but JJ has since left. Luca picks him up in, the, in an alleyway and they drive away. JJ gets a ping on his phone. Yeah, what's up? What's the coordinates? Think she saw the whole thing? It must have. You know where to go? Yeah, I'm programming the coordinates in the GPS right now. The four of them to Lee. Right. The Cyclops, on the roof, looks out into the Vienna skyline. Lucky shot. Amateurs. He hears a buzz and looks at his phone. He sighs and turns away as the police arrive on the scene. At the designated location, they find themselves in a country church where they stand around the churchyard, pretending to be mourners at a grave. So, do you think she's hot? Who? Bro, come on, you know what, who I mean. I mean, she is good looking, I admit. But she's a bit too... bitchy for me, you know? Gentlemen, they turn around to see Perticus. Well, that's not what I expected, or how I would have handled the situation, but he got the job done. And the data retrieved confirms our suspicions. We'll pass it on to our people. So, we're gonna stop all this once we've offed everybody on the kill list? I mean, we'd be up for it. Ugh. Dude. We have a man for that. Hey, there is a matter of those two assassins that were... Literally gunning for us? Yes. And we've frozen the oligarch's assets, so it should minimize their presence. Even the best hired guns won't work for free. Who were they, anyway? It doesn't matter. She hands him a dossier. You're heading to Ukraine this time. Your target is Mikhail Chirundolo. Antigonus? Really? Hmm. I say he's more like a humanese. He pulls a lot of weight in the Kremlin. And this is going to require precision. So, no improvising. Got it? Yeah. 
We'll try. I'll be in touch once the job is done. There's a van down that hill. It'll take you to the Ukrainian border where an intelligence officer will drive you to his estate. Instructions will be provided as needed. As she leaves, the three look at each other. Just saying. If she wasn't such a tight ass, she'd be pretty cool. You know? In an undisclosed location, we see the Cyclops sitting in a chair where Red Jack walks in and sits down next to him. He adjusts his helmet, and Cyclops smiles and crosses his arms, as Red Jack's helmet is badly cracked and damaged. Can't believe you got sideswiped by a van. Really? I didn't let her boss get off like fish in a barrel. Before Cyclops can say anything, a voice chimes in. Enough. Two grown men, the best in their field, sniping like children in the schoolyard. You had one simple task, and you failed. There were complications. Is that so? You have been given files on these three. You could have strangled them and be done with it. And yet, here you sit, bested by three fucking idiots. Men who are more children than men. We promise you, we won't fail. We just need time to prepare. I agree. And you two men against three isn't a fair fight. They hear footsteps and see a man wearing a skull helmet and a bandolier of bullets stride in. You too will need to be a trio. Seriously? You hired Bloodbath. Now you sure cocked it up, you two. A one night assassin and Ike's detained in a cosplay helmet. You need a so you need soldiers to lead. You need me. As the others scoff, the voice speaks up. No, I agree. And this time you three will not foul it up. You will kill the bushwhackers. Understood? Understood. Do not fail me. Do not embarrass us. This is your second and last chance. Don't worry. We'll get it done. And there won't be any mistakes. Thank you.